Hey, what's going on everybody? Badger DIY back here again. And in today's video, we're going to check out how to download and install the latest Android 13 for PC. I'll walk you through a couple of different installation methods. Running it from a USB drive or installing directly to an SSD. And I'll also show you how to make it boot straight into your preferred kernel. To get this project done, you will need just a couple of things. First, a SATA to USB adapter if you're installing directly to an SSD. You'll also need a good quality USB thumb drive. I'm using a SanDisk model here. And for easier navigation, once Android is up and running, you can use a standard Fire Stick remote or even better, an Air Mouse remote with a built-in keyboard. And of course, you'll need your old PC. Quick specs check. This is a Lenovo M910Q Tiny. It's running an Intel Core i5-7500T and 16 gigs of RAM, more than enough to handle Android 13. And hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, do me a favor, hit that like button, get subscribed and turn on notification. It really helps the channel out and I've got a lot more coming up. In fact, in a future video, I'll show you how to turn this exact PC into a full-on retro media console. And yes, it can handle some Switch games. I do want to mention, this is not my own custom build. Full credit goes out to Bruno and Tulio. They've done an amazing job with this Android TV project. If you got any questions or run into any issues, definitely check out their Telegram group. The community there is super helpful. Now, keep in mind that the latest Android TV 13 build supports FAT32, XFAT and EXT4 partitions. That's going to be important when you move on, on to installation process. To download the ISO, you will need to join their Telegram group. Now, you will have to go through a couple of monetization links. Yeah, it's an extra step, but that's how the developers keep this project going. It only takes a minute or two and in my opinion it's definitely worth it to support the work they're doing. Once you got the ISO downloaded, head back into the Telegram group. You also need to grab some data files. In my case, I picked up the 4 gig data file for my USB thumb drive install and the larger 64 gig data file for the SSD setup. Next step, you'll need to extract the Google TV 13 ISO into a folder. I just called mine Google TV Extracted, but you can name it whatever you like. For this, you can use WinRAR, 7-Zip, or really any extraction tool you're comfortable with. Now we'll set up the partitions. Go ahead and plug your SSD into the PC using the SATA to USB adapter. In Windows, head over to Create Informal Hard Disk Partitions. We'll make two partitions here. The first one is 150 megabytes, formatted as FAT32, and the label is boot. The second one uses the rest of the available storage, formatted as XFAT. I called mine Badger TV, but you can name it whatever you like. Next, we'll move a few important files into the first partition we just made, the one labeled boot. Open up your Google TV extracted folder and copy over all the kernel files along with the boot, FE, ISO Linux, and the init image. Drop all those straight into the boot partition. For the second step, we load up our larger partition. 
the one we labeled Badger TV. Into this partition, copy over the system SFS, the init image, and again all the kernel files. And for the final step, we'll take that 64 gigs data file we downloaded earlier and extract it directly to the XFAT partition, in my case, the one labeled Badger TV. Once that's finished, all our files are in place and the drive is ready to boot. And while we are here, let's go ahead and cover the USB installation as well. For this, you'll need Rufus. Just plug your USB thumb drive into the PC, open Rufus, select the ISO and choose your USB drive from the selected list. Give it a name, I went with Badger TV, then leave all the other options as their defaults and click start. Simply agree to any warning messages that pop up. Once that's done, you also need to extract the 4 gig data file directly to the USB drive. And that's all it takes to get the USB version set up. Okay, let's do our first boot. With the SSD plugged into the PC, go ahead and port it on. At this stage is really a bit of a trial and error to see which kernel works best for your system. In my case, kernel 112 gave me the smoothest performance. From there, just go through the usual Android TV setup, connect your Wi-Fi, sign in to your Google account and get your basic settings dialed in. Once you finish the setup process, head into the storage settings. And as you can see here, I've got about 63 gigs available, which means the installation worked perfectly. And yes, we are officially running Android 13 on this system. From here, you can go ahead and start downloading your favorite apps. For my test run, I installed YouTube and Jellyfin, and I can say everything worked great. Now, keep in mind, this custom Android TV build only supports WeDivine L3. That means streaming services like Netflix, Prime Video and Disney Plus will only play in SD quality. But on the bright side, We Divine doesn't affect media servers apps like Jellyfin or Plex, so you can still enjoy your own content in full quality. If streaming services are your main priority, you might be better off with something like a Fire Stick or Chromecast. But for local media playback and customization, this setup is just perfect. To get your Fire Stick remote working, just head into the settings, remotes and accessories. And on the Fire Stick remote itself, hold down the home button for about 10 seconds. Once it show up the screen, select it and you're good to go. In my case, I actually prefer using an air mouse remote. The controls are super responsive and having that air mouse function just makes navigating Android TV a lot easier. Honestly, it's amazing to use compared to a standard remote. Now let's set this up to boot straight into your preferred kernel. With the SSD still connected over the USB, Open up the boot partition and go into the boot grub folder. Inside you'll find the grub.cfg file. Right click on it, open it with notepad and edit it so it defaults to your kernel of choice. Don't worry, I'll leave the exact code you'll need in a pinned comment below so it will be a stress-free experience. Once you made the change, don't forget to save the file. And now let's test it out. Power the system back on.
and as you can see it, it goes straight into Android TV booting right into our preferred kernel with no extra menus everything is working exactly as it should but now let's also check the USB install to boot from USB you'll need to use your system fast boot key on this Lenovo laptop that's F12 from there just select your USB drive and it will bring you into the Android TV boot menu go ahead and pick the kernel you want to use and then follow the standard installation process from there and there we are boot it straight into Android TV this time from the USB thumb drive Everything's up and running just like it should. Another great thing about this setup is that you can hook your laptop up to your TV with HDMI and run Android TV right up the big screen. It really gives you that true setup box experience. So overall this is a really solid project whether you're running from a SSD for the best performance or straight from a USB drive just to test things out. It's fast, flexible, and it gives you a full Android TV experience right on your PC or laptop. Don't forget to like the video if you found it helpful, and subscribe to the channel for more DIY tech project. And make sure you stay tuned, because in an upcoming video I'll be turning this exact PC into a full retro gaming console and media center. As always, thanks for watching!